Yeah, so after the World Cup, coming to Qatar now has become very easy for people who just want to visit and it's becoming more difficult day by day for people who want to come to Qatar and work. Now, let me tell you why. Now, because back in the days before the World Cup was played here, Qatar was building the country for the World Cup. So most of the infrastructures that were built here, the stadiums, you can you can mention them, um, the hotels, the residents, I mean, the accommodations. All these things were built to you know support the world cup so after the world cup all these places that were built need people to accommodate them as in need people to work in them so i think qatar has more of recruited a huge number of people to work in qatar now and it's sort of becoming very difficult for people who also want to come to qatar now to work so i mean after the world cup i have I had a lot of people who, who have been contacting me to you know help them find a job in Qatar but trust me it hasn't been that easy and even if there are job offers they are very 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 difficult to you know um, consider the service charge because they are extremely expensive and you can't even you know uh, wrap your head around it for example you are getting an agent who is charging you for like seven thousand dollars and your salary that you'll be earning here is just about thousand dollars which doesn't add up like you're paying seven times and guess what all these offer letters are being given free by the company owners up here so if a company is offering you free sponsorship i mean free visa free tickets and free accommodation but the agent i mean the third person which is the agent is also going to take you a huge amount of money which you know sometimes doesn't say 12 minutes so so on today's video is just about qatar visa scams and how to identify them now the more we talk about how to identify them, the harder it becomes to identify them. Because now if we sit here and we talk about how to identify them or how to, you know, pinpoint fake um, offer letters and how to, you know, get to fake agents, now they up their game. Because if you teach me how to, how to outsmart the system, of course, I'll be smarter than the system. So that is how hard it's becoming now. But then we will still talk about a few things. In previous videos, I've talked about how to check your visas if um, an agent tells you that Yo, your offer letter is here and you ask them for the visa and they give you uh, a visa you can just or even if they tell you that your visa is in progress you can just go on the my website check your visa whether your visa is really uh, in progress or they are just you know throwing you some um, stories here and there so um last week i had this guy from you know Nigeria so he contacted me and he wanted me to check a company that is um, He is trying to you know work with them like the company is trying to recruit him into Qatar here. Yeah. So um, We had some terms, you know some terms like okay I'm gonna do the job for you then you're gonna pay me because if you're paying the agent to do all this job for you $30 or $20 to pay me to do the due diligence to you know to help imagine you pay me $20 to do the proper research for you and um you get a job or you you find out that the job is fake or the offer letter is fake or you either pay the agent seven thousand dollars and then you they, they take your money away which one do you prefer pay the twenty dollars or the thirty dollars to get yourself fixed or just go ahead and pay this uh, seven thousand or the six thousand dollars or whatsoever that the agent is charging you so it's solely up to you so this guy we we reached an agreement and uh yeah he sent me his offer letter so i'm going to show you uh, the offer letter but then due to you know confidential stuff i'm not going to be able to show everything to you so now this is the offer that he i mean the poster that he saw i think after the world cup there's been a lot of posters like this one so i'm going to show on the screen it is looking for expo candidates for the following positions and the salary was four thousand qatar riyals today in qatar four thousand riyals it's going to be very 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 tough unless you're already up there if i say you're already up there like people who have been recruited from from the Europe or you know US people like that yeah they earn more and also well so let's get into it so um, the, the I mean these are the following positions they had waiter waitresses security customer care drivers and whatnot so he sent me he sent me this and uh, you know we reached an agreement that okay so if you um, this is how much I'm going to charge you and this is how you have to pay this is how the payment process is going to go so he agreed and then on the day when he was sent the offer letter yeah he sent it to me and I, I had to do my my research of course now this is how i did it so this is his offer letter uh that's his name up there and the company's name is century time trading contracting and services now the first thing i did was to go to google and you know 
do some research about this company now when i went to google i typed this company's name the first companies or the first thing that popped up was century trading and contracting i'm like okay so the company's name or the company that is recruiting this guy is called and um it's called century time trading and uh, you know contracting services but then the one i found on google is different now it's okay companies might have slightly you know similarities like there are a lot of companies that have similarities with you know even with their slogans and their names but this one seemed a bit tricky as in the manager's name also popped up on google and he happened to be a nigerian now that was the first red flag for me i'm not saying nigerians are bad but that was the red the first red flag for me i you know i quickly checked his linkedin accounts um and i found out that <laughs> okay so hold on now the company the first company that is recruiting this guy that is the okay so we're going to name them company a and company b all right so the first company that is the century time trading contracting and services that's the company a okay and the company b is the century trading and contracting so i didn't find anything related to this company but rather i found contacts or emails related to company b which is the century trading and contracting now Luckily for me, I even found their number and their email and also their address. So I quickly called them. Now I called them and there was this other guy on the other uh, end of the phone. He says his name is Mohammed Al something something. I'm not too sure about the name. So I asked him uh, if this is the company. So now I didn't even I didn't even realize because when I first saw Century Trading, I thought, oh boom, that's the same thing as Century Time Trading and Contracting Services. So I just asked him, is this Century Time Trading and Contracting um, Services? He said, uh, yes. Uh, how may I help you? And I, I told him, look, uh, a friend of mine has um, received an offer letter from you, so I just want to check the eligibility of the company. If um, this con um, offer letter is real or not, he asked me the name of the person that you know received the offer letter and uh, i mentioned it to him he checked through their system he said no there is no such name he said which position i said yeah as a driver he said no now first of all this company is a, sh it's a shipping company like they deal with vessels so they are currently not recruiting drivers so he told me no um what's the name of the company again then i mentioned i'm um, century time trading contracting and services and it was like no our company's name is century trading and contracting He's like, is there anything else I can help you with? I said, no, that's that's it, that's cool. So now I came back to to you know compare the details. So with the offer letter, the details I found on it, it even had their address, their email address, their postal address. So then again, I found the same you know details on the original website. That is the with the um, century trading and contracting. So I had to compare them. Now one thing that I found that really baffled me was. The same address of the century um, trading and contracting was the same as the other one so like both a and b companies had the same uh you know uh, informations as in how to reach their office i'm like no there's something wrong here it's either company b is lying or company a is lying which i'm getting to the end of it already so how can two 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 different or two similar companies have the same address. Um, uh, you know, it makes sense. I mean, it doesn't make sense at all. Uh, their email. So it's okay. Email, everyone can create an email. Anyone can create an email. But also today I found something. Whilst I was preparing to, you know, uh, to shoot this video, I also found something. Now I went on Google and again, I found this same website, this um, um, Century Time, this company A. I found their website with different email address. Now the email address they have on their website is different from this email that is on the offer letter. Now it's okay. I mean, you can create do dozens of emails as you want. You can create 10 emails. I mean, a, a, a company as big as this can have as many emails as they want. I mean, we can't, we can't base on that to, you know, to say, probably this company, it's a legit company, but the, the agent or the person trying to offer this guy a job is, you know, trying to go back door or just using the company's name to fraud this guy so i asked him how much he was asked to pay he, he never disclosed to me but for sure this is 
this is big money because if your company is paying for your tickets your accommodation and again they're going to pay you four thousand katarias you are going to pay more like service fee in terms of service fee he was really going to pay more so now this is my my point i just wanted to reference this to you know to get to the to the bottom line it's difficult to find a job now in qatar even there are lots of people after the world cup a lot of people are still coming in with with higher card visa uh, with with the hope of finding a job so you find these people some of them succeed i don't know how they do it some of them succeed some of them are able to get a job look that is one of one of the beautiful things you can come here with a higher card but bear in mind that all the cost is going to be on you you have to pay for your rent you have to pay for your food your transportation everything is going to be on you or unless you have someone here who is willing to host you if you don't have that and you come here with your higher entry visa then you can be rest assured that you know all these courses are going to be on you but then again you can go around don't just sleep the country is beautiful don't be don't be tossing or don't be <laughs> going to places for serious look for a job as soon as possible because bro this country is expensive i'm not gonna lie it's expensive so uh if you come if you come in to look for a job i'm not sure you are that rich i'm not saying you are poor either but you are not that rich to you know um uh, fly just to fly here and be chilling you need to be on your toes and look for a job and as soon as you get a job um then the company that is willing to offer you a job will you know fast forward the process get you a visa exit and come back again and also uh, let's touch on the on the freelance visa thing i've said it so many times that coming to qatar in these times with freelance visa now most people are getting my point wrong i never said freelance visa is is not allowed now there is there is nothing if, now look you can go on my websites and check the kind the kinds of visas qatar has anything you find over there means it's legal anything you don't find over there it's illegal so if you don't find freelance visa category over there then it means it's, it's illegal right so now that is where i'm getting to since it's not on the my website then it means it's illegal but in some way if you know how to move around it it becomes okay for you now for example i have a friend of mine who is from gambia he came to qatar with a freelance visa he found himself a job in a hotel and the and the and the, and the hotel changed his visa into their sponsorship okay that's it he's safe now but if you come here with a freelance visa i'm not even going to go further and talk about this freelance i know most people are very much interested in this freelance visa thing but the more i keep on i keep talking about it the more you know people get interested in it and they want to try you know it's like telling someone that if you go here you're going to die yeah they they really want to see how the death death feels like or how how death looks like so that is all about that just be vigilant open your eyes don't don't be scared to question the agent or don't be scared to question anyone who is willing to offer you a job even if it's the president question them how is this going to be because guess what don't be paying that those monies to the agent and you come and ask me questions because if you come to me i'll also ask you to pay right because you can't pay them all the money and you come and you stress my life no no way no way so if you're giving them money ask them and please before you come to my dms or now i have my whatsapp number on my youtube so if you come to me and you want to have a conversation make sure you've researched about what you want to talk about don't just come like blank headed and just come and ask me uh please tell me more about qatar i'm not google you can go to google and do all those research don't come to me and ask me uh, please what is visa what is higher visa please go to google do that i'm not google please do that and then when you come to me you already have your fact you already have your research come on you you want to travel to a, a country a country where you 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 don't know anybody you don't even know how things go over there you might probably seen videos or people living there but you don't really know the actual fact over there do your research don't just go or don't just go pay money to agents ask the agent good night bye bye oh please my name is malik steli don't forget to subscribe to this youtube channel now we are back and better so yeah stay safe and i love you bye bye